Amen. Now that I know my voice is not going to crack, thank you all for the recognition. Thank you for those of you who can stay for a few moments to enjoy the gluten-free cake along with the regular cake. <laughs> um, I'm blessed. I am thankful to be here. Um, hard to put into words. Uh, you saw uh, Malkisa bring a gift up for me inside. She said there's, there's a bag and inside the bag there was some bling. So I decided to put my bling on <laughs> that they made with love and I'm thankful. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for all the moments in our lives and I'm especially thankful for the people who pressed their way here this morning as you blessed us with the rain that the trees and the grass and the flowers and the animals and we so desperately need it because we were in a deficit. So God, as we made our way here this morning, we're looking for a word from you. So as your daughter, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart is acceptable in your sight for you are my strength and my redeemer. Amen, amen, and amen. We continue in our stewardship season, and we're looking at what it means to be good stewards over God's people and God's possessions. When we joined the church, we pledged to support it with our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. So far, we've looked at presence and what it means in the life of the church, and I attached the presence message with the last part of from Ebenezer to Emmanuel because it was important once we looked at our history that we realized that we have a history and we are here today because of the presence of the people who came before us who thought it was important for us to be a part of the community of Beltsville. So they stayed and because they stayed we are still here. We're here for our community to meet their basic needs through food and clothes and we're here as a gathering place for meetings. We're here to provide resources. We're here for fellowship. And most importantly, we're here to provide a place to increase their faith. Then we looked at the importance of prayer in our lives. Prayer is the intentional conversation with God. It's not a laundry list of the things we want, but it's asking for guidance from God as God provides what we need. It's not a blueprint for prayer. There is no certain location or posture or magic words is going to get God's ear over any other words that we say, but our deep desire to build our faith through this constant communication is the word says to pray without ceasing. And then we looked at service, and I shared my challenging day on December 9th when I was almost hit by a car that morning and then that afternoon I was still expected to serve in my role as pastor by doing a funeral and a burial and how in all situations that they will all be great or ideal but because God has called us to something special and asked us to serve and be his hands and his feet God will give us what we need in those less than ideal situations to serve the least the lost and the left out in our society sometimes it means we have to come outside of our comfort zones and be challenged but because God is sending us God will equip us for the service that is needed then Pastor Lenora shared beautifully about what it means to bear witness and it's an important part of our faith journey. We must be able to show others how God is working in our lives through our actions every day. And the fifth component we'll talk about today is gifts. And usually when we think about gifts, we think about monetary things, but gifts are everything that we need that God uniquely gives us to be part of the mission of the church. It's not enough to think of it in a monetary way. Yes, we're expected to give to the church in a monetary way, and thank you all for giving. Amen. Hallelujah. But our focus this week is on giving. Usually we think about the tangible things, and that's fine when it comes to the stewardship campaign that's currently going on, and you'll be getting letters about your monetary 
of support of the church's work, the church's mission, and the church's ministries. But it's more than a tangible monetary response. Because sometimes when we think of gifts and giving in monetary, tan tangible ways, we sometimes make bad decisions. When I was a, let me turn my mic on. Can you hear me if I move? Okay. When I was a transit police officer, um, I was at a station and a call went over the radio that an officer needed assistance. And I was close by, so I went. And when I got there, um, an ambulance was also on its way. She had witnessed a young man doing a drug transaction and not wanting to be caught with the drugs on him, he decided to swallow them. So she went to do the paperwork and I went to the hospital to watch him because by the time I got there, of course he was unconscious because he just ingested, ingested a bunch of drugs. So as I was on watch, because there needs to be a police officer there because he was under arrest, he had his stomach pumped, he survived, and he started to come to. And we were talking, you know, um, asked him how he was doing. And just out of curiosity, I asked him, what made him do that? And he shared a story about losing his job and struggling to make ends meet and how it affected his relationship with his children, or so he thought, because you know, they weren't living with him and whenever he went to see them, he took them gifts. But his financial situation kept him from doing that and in his mind, because he didn't have anything to give them, it meant that he couldn't see them. So I shared with him the importance of giving of self. That although the monetary gifts of life I mean, the things that we get in life are good. It's the giving of self that will make the difference in his children's lives. So as we talked for a while, the nurse came and joined us and I shared with him, you know, while you're looking for employment, why don't you pick a day, like Tuesday, and a time, maybe 4 p.m., that every Tuesday at 4 p.m. they're either gonna see you or they're gonna hear from you because they know that you may not be able to see them every day, but at least one day, during one time, they're the most important thing in your life. So schedule them into your life. So we continued to talk. We talked about you know, God and faith and second chances and the importance of giving ourselves over monetary things. And then the other officer came and I left and before I left, he asked me to pray with him and for his family and for his situation because see, this was the first time that he had ever sold drugs and I was teasing him that he wasn't very good at it. <laughs> but see, he gave into the temptation to sell drugs because his mind thought that giving up something was more important than giving of himself. And the reason I'm sharing that story this morning is because Paul in the message to us is telling us that giving of ourselves is important. Paul wasn't in the ideal situation. He was in prison. And the reason he was in prison is because he was bold enough to share the gospel of Jesus Christ in a place that people didn't want to hear about it. They had their own thoughts of what they thought was important in their lives. So Paul endured a lot of things for the gospel. A lot of places that he went wasn't ideal places. And he found himself working or doing odd jobs to sustain himself or depending on the kindness of people he, as he traveled from place to place. Because Paul was just as zealous for the word of God as he was against it when he was Saul. So Paul even though some scholars said that it wasn't really Paul who wrote the letters, it was someone writing because they knew Paul because of the stance they had against women in this particular book of the Bible. But Paul, because that's who some scholars think wrote this book, was writing Timothy, trying to encourage Timothy that even in challenging situations, we can still give of ourselves. Here he is in prison. And he isn't having a pity party like you would think he would have, knowing that his death was coming. He was using his time to give to Timothy encouragement so that Timothy can carry on. 
I don't know about you, but there are times in our lives where we start to think about our end times like Paul did. I know on that Wednesday, I thought about my end time and what it would have been like if things had been different and the car did not miss me. Would anybody miss me? <laughs> what would happen to my family? Did I make a difference while I was here? And for a couple of days, I was still caught up in the feeling of that car brushing by me. But as I started to think, I was having a Paul moment when I realized, you know, you're here, you're still here for a reason. And while you are, continue to encourage people. Don't get caught up in what, have, what could have happened. Just like Paul couldn't get caught up in the fact that he knew that he was going to die. And, and the interesting thing is, we don't like to talk about death. But that is the only thing that we will all have in common, we will all die. We dress it up with pretty words. He's going to be with the Lord. The journey is over. They got their wings. They passed away. They passed on. They're going to see mama and grandpa. But the reality of it is, as Paul was sharing with us, we all are going to pass that way. So in those thoughts, we continue to give. Paul said, and he looked back over his life, and he said his life was poured out like a libation, a, a, you know, a libation that you have at celebration. He wanted to celebrate in a less than ideal place in prison. And their prisons weren't like, you know, the blue collar prisons that, you know, we just saw on TV, the person walking around freely. <laughs> It wasn't like that kind of prison. These were usually dug out horrible places where they were barely surviving. And in the midst of that, Paul still was giving himself to Timothy so that Timothy can give himself to other people. It, gift of giving is important in the life of the church. I want to read a little different translation of the very beginning of what Paul said from verse 6 through 8. He says, For I am already being poured out, and the last drops of this drink offering are all that remain. It's almost time for me to leave. I have fought the good fight. I have stayed on course and finished the race. And through it all, I have kept believing. I look forward to what's in store for me, a crown of righteousness that the Lord and an always right and just judge will give me that day. But it is not only for me, but for all those who love and long for his appearing. Paul kept believing. When we speak into people's lives, we don't ever really know where it goes. But I want to share with you that it was about six months later, this man came running towards me. Now, I was a police officer. I was used to people running from me, <laughs> but running towards me. So as I was watching him run, my hand just slowly went down to my side. <laughs> you know, because, yeah, because I wanted to be able to protect myself just in case it was unsavory. And he wanted to tell me, because see, I didn't recognize him at first because he was all cleaned up. And he told me that he had found a job because he prayed about a job. And he chose Tuesday at 4 o'clock as his appointed time with his children. So every Tuesday they know that he was going to be an important part of their life. We don't know when we pour out to somebody with our presence, whether we're listening to them just spill, or we're sitting with them as they're grieving. Well, we don't know what a prayer does to someone when we give them a gift and we, they didn't even tell us that they needed it, but it came from somewhere. We don't know how important it is to just be in the life of someone as United Methodists as we support the church with our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. That giving is more than money. Stewardship is more than money. Stewardship is giving of ourselves from a kind and unselfish heart without expecting something in return. That's why we give. That's the spirit of giving. And that's what Paul is trying to tell us 
this morning that regardless of our situation, because we're still here, because we are still breathing, we can still give. So let's continue to pour out like a libation and use Paul as an example that in good and in challenging times, the stewardship is more than money. It's giving of our full selves in the life of Christ. Amen. <laughs>